Hello, this is Clinton Halstead, and this course is Digital Electronics. First, we're going to start with Chapter 1, the basic principles of digital systems. We're first going to talk about analog versus digital signals. An analog signal is a continuous varying signal. It is represented by, it's produced by analog electronic components like op amps, transistors, anything that creates a continuous signal. And, and nature naturally has um, analog signals. For example, pressure, time, light, those are all variables that have a continuous nature, which means they can take on any a value. Whereas a digital signal is a way of representing physical quantity in discrete steps. So a digital signal, there's there are discrete steps, and by discrete we mean numeric steps. So there's there's going to be numbers in between that are not going to be represented. Another way to think about that is the digital number is is an integer. Whereas analog numbers are going to be real numbers, floating point numbers in nature. One way you can think of this is to think about an analog signal, that is a, a signal that can take any value, a real number, and think about a clock, which is the heartbeat of any digital system. Now the clock samples the analog data and quantizes it. That means that it converts it into a numeric value. So at this point you may have a value of 5. Here you may have a value of 6. Here you may have a value of 3. And over here you may have a value of eight. And this function is performed by what we call an analog to digital converter. That symbol is drawn as given on the screen. We have an input, which is analog, and the output is a numeric digital value. And to summarize, analog electronics values are continuously variable between defined values. Now, even in analog, there's, there's a certain range of values. For example, this analog to digital converter, if it's connected to 5 volts, the analog input signal would be limited to a value of 5 volts. But digital values have both a, a limit and also they only occur in discrete steps. For example, like I said before, integers. Analog can have any value within a defined range. And here's another example of, a, of an analog wave that has not, it, it's an audio source. And you can represent here that it's being sampled by an analog to digital converter. The lines on the screen here represent discrete steps, quantization in other words. So if we have an analog to digital converter, converter that has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight levels, actually if we got rid of the last level then we could call the first level 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Then we would have an 8-bit, I'm sorry, huh. we would actually have a 3-bit three 3-bit 
So it would have values, digital values from 0 to 7. That's represented by 0, 0 to 1, 1, 1. 0, 0, 0 being what we would call decimal 0 but this is the binary representation of what we normally would call a decimal zero. This would be a decimal three. <clears throat> so in digital electronics, like we alluded to before, the values can, can vary only by distinct or discrete steps. In other words, integers. Integers are counting numbers that allows negative and uh, zero. So a counting number would be zero, one, two, three. I'm sorry, without the zero. That would counting numbers would be one, two, three. If you add the zero and then you add negative numbers, those are integers. So that's really what what this is meaning when it says discrete steps. They're, the values are integers. Now how high, how high the integer can go depends on the number of bits in the digital number or the digital analog, analog to digital converter. But um, the, ba the most basic unit at the, bo at the most basic level a digital value is represented by a bit and a bit can have a value of either 0 or 1 so this is what we call a bit this is the smallest unit element in a digital word or digital number The next thing we'll discuss is digital, digital logic levels. A logic high is defined as the higher voltage and represented by a binary digit 1. I would call this logic 1. Someone would call it logic high. Here they're calling it digit 1. But many, many times the literature will say a logic 1 or logic high and use those two terms synonymously. Conversely, logic low would be digit zero or logic zero. And it's always the lower of, of the two voltages. So, for example, an analog to digital converter may have a reference of minus five and plus five volts. And so a value of minus five could represent a low plus 5 could represent high. Most normally though, in the original digital logic that was 5 volt logic, this side of the analog to digital converter was grounded. So you had 0 to 5. And so the 0 volts really represented logic 0. and the 5 volts represented logic 1. This is represented by the following diagram. Assuming we have an analog signal that takes some time to transition from, from 0 to 5 volts Depending on where you sample this signal with your clock is, is depending on where whether the signal is going to be defined as logic low or high. There is what we call this undefined region which we do not want to be in. <clears throat> so if your clock samples your data at the wrong spot in the undefined region then you may get a, a zero or you may get a one. 
That's why it's called undefined. You don't really know what you, you may get when you sample your signal. However, if you sample your signal at this point, and this is a rising edge clock device, analog to digital converter, then you will sample this signal in what's defined as the low logic region. And so you, you should get a logic zero out at this point. Conversely, if you were to sample this signal with your clock at this point in time, you would sample the analog waveform in the logic high region. So you should get a logic one out, or bit one. That's it for the very first lesson. Thank you very much.